What's up everybody? Jay Wilson, it's Sunday. Enjoy this video. It is something that could be used for you if you keep freshwater, if you keep shrimp, if you keep mollies, if you keep guppies, if you keep saltwater tanks, frag tanks, coral tanks, just fish tanks. It don't matter. It's all the same. Let's go. Oh, and they can kill things. Yes, like dead. Death. Just chaos. Yeah. So, let's go. All right, folks. So today we are going to be talking about brown algae. However, it's not brown algae. We get this confused because, well, we don't know enough about what we're talking about or what we read to really fully understand. So I'm hoping this video will break it down because I've done the research. I'm starting to understand it a heck of a lot more. And some of you may already know. And so I would hope in the comments, you let me know that, hey, look, I already knew that jack turd. But if you didn't know, I'd also like to know what you thought was happening or did it actually cause an adverse reaction in your home aquarium, whether fresh or salt, it does not matter. Comments, and of course, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, baby, and let's talk about diatoms. So before I get into diatoms in regards to your aquarium, did you know that diatoms make up 25 to 40% of the oxygen that we breathe as humans? Did you know that diatoms are in every body of water to include your glass box? Did you know that diatoms that even once dead are still helping to fuel things like the Amazon rainforest. Yes, when diatoms die, they end up drying out and you're left with their silica cell or the dried up silica in terms of what they use to house themselves and reproduce. This is case in point in the African deserts that once was a body of water, but now is just salt flats. And now we've got silica casings everywhere. And so when these dust storms sweep across the world, they end up landing, you guessed it, on the coast of South America, the Amazon, thus giving the awesome fertilizer to help grow that amazing, amazing rainforest. So if you've owned an aquarium, you're watching this video and you thought you had brown algae and I'll show you a photo of this aquarium, which is why I'm bringing this video up. I'm sure this video has been done many times, but I want to show you a picture of this aquarium with diatoms completely taking over. Mm -hmm. It looked good actually. Some people say that diatoms are ugly and you know brown algae which is not diatoms but what we're calling it is ugly. I in fact think it really brings a natural look to any aquarium especially the decor. Now let me show you diatoms blooming on another aquarium that I have. So why are they still showing up in your aquarium? or my aquarium? Well, the answer is quite complex yet simple. It's because there's stuff in your water that they are enjoying and they are reproducing, they are dividing asexually, and they will continue until you either remove this source or they will stay if you don't. Another cool part of diatoms is, well, when they die off, they're used to make dynamite. How cool is that? And there's huge deposits in North America. There's deposits all over the world. Anywhere there was once a body of water, there are dead diatom cells somewhere. If there is a body of water, like stated earlier on in the video, there is diatoms presence. And they are four times smaller than a strand of hair. And if you were paying attention, they are encrusted in silicate cells. So, how the heck are they reproducing and thriving in an aquarium? 
Because as you can see here, they're completely gone. And I can tell you that I haven't changed a thing except I haven't done a water change in quite some time. So people will tell you all the time, you have to remove the light. If you don't remove the light, you'll continue to have diatoms. That is absolutely incorrect because diatoms don't need light exclusively to grow or reproduce. They require silicates. That's right, silicates found in substrate, found in the water column. Yeah. So if you want to know, test your water. And if you don't want to have to know, then use RODI water and then replace it with some trace elements for your specific system. If you have high nitrate content, so if it's coming out of your water with high nitrate content, or you have high nitrates because you're keeping a system where you're not doing a lot of water changes and waste is building up, you're gonna have diatoms. A, a water source that is has a ton of minerals in it is also going to create diatoms. So my thought process before when I was keeping aquariums was, I have well water, don't worry about me guy because well water is the best water. Well, yes, but it's also high in minerals and sediment, which is an absolute perfect thriving environment or you guessed it, diatoms. Also, if you're like, well, I still have diatoms, knucklehead, and I don't have any of those problems, but you don't have flowing water. Your water isn't flowing like it is. So if your water is very stagnant, let's say a beta tank or a tank that doesn't require much flow or you're trapping flow and in that area there are a ton of diatoms, well, guess what? It's because you're not moving those diatoms away from that area so that they can get sucked up into the filter or that they can just be broken down by fish because some fish will eat diatoms. I've noticed that Trophius enjoy grazing off of diatoms. I've also noticed that Placosimus enjoy it. There is autos that enjoy it. There are a ton of fish that enjoy sucking things off of rocks and sand and those fish will be perfect for you in terms of ridding your diatom issue. So that is a ton of information regarding diatoms. Keep your water moving. Make sure you don't have high mineral content. Make sure that you're not fueling these bad boys with a ton of light. Make sure you're not just leaving a ton of food for these diatoms to consume because hey, if your nitrates are high, chances are you're having diatom problems. But Jay, you said they can kill. Well, guess what? They can. So how can diatoms kill? Well, diatoms love oxygen. So if you have an oxygen lacking environment with no agitation, you've got light, everything's jamming, diatoms can take over and remove oxygen. So if there is an issue outside of the diatoms, the diatoms are not going to help in any way, shape or form. They're only going to continue removing oxygen as the diatoms continue to thrive. So if you've done all of those other things and you're still having diatom issues, well, guess what? You're probably going to have to take a lot of this stuff out, scrub it, remove it off plants and get those plants back into that aquarium because ultimately they can kill different things to include coral. So if you've got a saltwater aquarium and it is just encrusting the coral, well, guess what? That coral is not going to thrive. It's actually going to die. And it is going to be because the diatoms have completely removed the oxygen that that living thing needed and it will kill it. So diatoms, they're cool looking. They're needed in the world in terms of us breathing, but in an aquarium, they can kill. And they can kill rather quickly if you don't take control of your aquarium. So if you just set up an aquarium, you're all super pumped, guess what? There is potential chance that you can have diatoms spurred up within four weeks. And the reason being is because now all of the richness is happening, you've got your nitrates are coming into play, and diatoms are now fueling and multiplying and continuing to grow. But it's simple, they can die out with 
using products that can suck them out. So if you've got phosphate removers, you can absolutely use those. Carbon is not going to take diatoms out. However, like stated, phosphate removers will remove them and they will also remove most of the time silicates from the water, causing diatoms to ultimately disappear and die off. So while they're needed in the world, they're not needed in your aquarium and there are ways to get rid of them. But if they're not something that's so bad to you because you have a ton of movement, your light isn't going crazy, but you have high mineral content, just watch your stuff. It's not gonna be the end all be all. However, it can be and it can play a major role. And remember, whenever trying to rid something from your aquarium, don't do a ton of things all at one time. Make sure that you're doing it step by step so that this way, if there is an adverse reaction from one of those steps, you know what you just added instead of doing everything all at one time. Just like your health. Don't do a ton of things all at one time to try to lose weight or anything like that. Do one systematic thing at a time because as you implement it, you can find out if it works and if it doesn't, you can purge it. But if it does, you can continue to add the next thing if the end result has not been achieved already. So you stayed till the end of the video. Sometimes there's motivation, sometimes there's just randomness. But today I wanna to talk to you about just understanding who you are inside. If there is no enemy within, no enemy outside can harm you. Does, does that make sense? So when you're, when you're fighting against your own mind, you're always going to continue having the same problems. This place sucks. I can't get out of here. School sucks. Don't want to do this. This sucks. So then you make this amazing transition which required so much effort and you get to that next stage in your life where maybe a different school, a different place to live, different environment, and you're still having the same problems. Guess what? It's not your environment, it's not the school, it's not anything that's happening around you, it's you. Change you, change the perception of how you think and you will find that everything around you is a heck of a lot better. But if everything around you is all a heck of a lot better, then just continue to do you.